everybody and welcome back to the essential guide to digital jewelry design this is Eva and uh, today I'd like to show you how to make a two stone ring that's open on the top so this is what we're going to have when it's finished and how can we best build this but before I start I just wanted to uh, mention quickly our book The Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design which is available on Gumroad or on Amazon um, it's in the link is in the information if you're interested or you can have a look at uh, some of our detailed tutorials on how to build very standard pieces of jewelry and some other exceptional pieces do give it a uh, do give it a look um, there's more information about it on Gumroad and there are free model packs and some advanced model packs available on Gumroad as well for download and let's jump right into our today's tutorial so what we have are two stones one is going to be a marquise and the other is going to be a cushion cut or an oval um, I would say it's more like an antique cushion cut. I'm just going to give you the sizes here. We have the, um, just need the, uh, oh snap on. And we're just going to measure out that stone. It's 1480, but that's not really correct because we're not using the rotated angle linear tool so actually it's 15 it's 15 millimeter 15 millimeter stone and our cushion cut is 7.32 if we have a look at this from the side you'll see the one is quite deep with a concave or convex shape at the bottom the depth of this one is 5.28 and the depth of the cushion cut is 4.84 so those are the sizes of the two stones we're going to work with today and what I've done is I have rotated the marquee slightly as, you've, as, you, as you would have noticed already slightly to the side um, uh, you, you can leave it straight or you can rotate it it's really just a matter of private preference um, after you've done the tutorial you can even position it uh, horizontally like this if you if you want to it could also look good but um, I've chosen this angle so the next thing I've done is I've created a finger size the finger size curve is just a circle curve around the zero axis point and if we go to our for the cut there just had to rearrange the screen capture a bit missing the top menu and uh, the command line at the bottom here was so small you couldn't see it so let's do that again we're just going to analyze the length so we're going to select our curve as you may have noticed this is Rhino 8 for Mac uh, that's why it looks different um, if we look down here in our command line we'll see the length of our curve is 54 millimeters that is a European ring size of 54 and I positioned my stones around about uh, one and a half centimeters to two uh, one half to two centimeters away from the curve so if I had to do an offset of this curve let's go over to our curve tools create an offset and we're going to make it a distance of 1.5 see they're around about 1.5 that's a good good distance away um, what you'll also notice that the stone on the side here does not exceed the um, it does not exceed the distance from the ring uh, the, the, the ring size by too much you don't want these stones too far out like that or too far out like that uh, that would create too large a gap in the center in the middle here and uh, you would need to then build on the 
on the other side of your ring to compensate for your finger on, on fingers on both sides so this is just keeping it neatly in one compact ring that fits comfortably on the finger okay so the next thing we're going to do let's start working out the shape of our ring and uh, what you see is a curve from the gem and the best way to do that is to I'm just going to switch those curves off and the best way to do that is to go to one of your gems and use the curve from uh, objects intersection uh, or section tool just a matter of drawing a curve or a straight line through the area of the, the gem or the object you want to extract a curve from and there you go you've got your curve now it's not really a curve it's just a segmented polyline and you can see here that the the segments are straight so let's just change the object layer of that curve and i'm going to make another one for our cushion cut so we're going to take the section section tool again um, chose my object and uh, wrong tool and we are going to draw that section through the cushion cut and also going to put that into our gem profile layer I'm going to open that gem profile layer up and first thing we're going to see is two separate curves the one is a rebuilt curve with a nicely uniform number of points on it that's the curve I rebuilt and the other is the curve that we created with the section so let's just delete the one that um, I already had in there and the same here you have the polyline with the kinks and you have the nice smooth curve I'm gonna delete that and what we're going to do with the big one is we are going to redraw it using interpol uh, interpolated curve. What I like to do here is, um, especially for a curve that's two degree like this, where you have two arches basically joined, I'm just going to create one side. like that and we can change it just a tad to fit the shape of the original and then I'm just going to delete the curve that we used for this uh, that we received from the section and I'm going to use our mirror tool Use the mirror tool. Shortcut keys are um, not working, and just join that. And now we have two curves joined into one closed curve. This one we're just going to rebuild. So we're just going to go into our curve tools and rebuild curve. And ten points is around about good. Uh, degree three, and we're just going to say rebuild. And there we go done so now i've got two clean curves to start with so next thing i'm going to do is we are going to create offset curves of these and we are going to name those our first set of network curve uh, profiles just bring that underneath here and we're going to do a offset curve uh, we'll make it about 0 0.8 millimeters in thickness because that should do in terms of thickness for our ring same actually with the big one we might want something just a little bit thicker so yeah we'll just go with 0 0.95 
okay should hold our stone nicely and if we put our stones back on again that's great so now we've got the material thickness for around our stones so we're going to put our ring size back again and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create an offset curve for our ring size as well so that we have a framework for the uh, thickness of our shank and we're going to make that two at the most um it's going to be a fairly bulky ring we might even want to bring that down to 1.8 Point 0.8 that might be better and <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we're going to create the side profile of our ring and for that I'm going to create a new network uh, this will be the second network curve prof and change that color to a dark red and we're going to start drawing we're going to use an interpolated curve for this so go to our curve tool go to curve and uh, control point no what we want is to interpolate curve we're going to go from the outer point of our ring of our of our ring on the side so the the, the quadrant so actually you could you could switch on quad on your object snap and from the side here we are going to draw and let's just put off our, our snap and grid snap we are going to be slightly in like this and we're working planar so we want this to be all in one plane although we will change that later as we go going to follow that line and do the same here and up here with the stone I'm going to bring the curve back again so put that on this time around I'm going to bring the curve there's a quadrant point here What we want here is we want this to come out just a tad, as you can see here. There we go. We might want to do a bit the same here, although that part should go in. Okay, now we're going to do the inside curve as well. With interpolated curve go to the quadrant switch off our our snaps and here we're not going to worry about going inside our ring our ring size curve because um, we're just going to cut that away from the object surface that we create um, at the end of the day so don't worry if it's on the inside of your ring size that is not going to be a problem and back okay there we go i want that curve Point to be too far. I want it to be more homogeneous. The same with this. I want that more homogeneous. And this event, I think we could do the same here. and the next thing to do will be to create two sets of curves uh, one will be going the other direction 
so instead of from the inside and the outside of the stone the inside and outside of the ring it'll be uh, the other inside with uh, the other sides of the ring so let's just create a new layer here we change that to blue and again interpolate curves this time we're just going to drop it right there and this time around this is the point of our ring so we want that to flow um be careful there because what it's doing this is is what i mean by we, we're going to have to change the um position of our point so what you can do is you can put your planner on in your snaps and this curve will move more with the ring size curve let's put on a snap on again let's just find the quadrant of this there we go okay and what we're going to do is we're just going to gather all of those points and we're going to move them back in here and we're going to have quite a thick ring so i'm leaving these outside curves approximately four millimeters outside here um i think what might make it easier to important is that this curve really flows with the the big stone you need to give it enough space underneath the seat but um what's important here is maybe this profile curve at the bottom which i'll just show you in a sec um there would be something like this so the best way to make that will be we will use this profile here create a circle from the center the center will be our ring size and in our right view yeah there we go and now what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate this just a little bit we're going to bring this down we're going to bring that down and eventually when i'm finished with the other curve that is on the other side of the ring we will we will move those two um but for the moment we just leave this like this in fact the bottom point here should be moved up as well to the just delete the offset curve the bottom So now we have all the curves we need in order to perform the network curve a network surface from curves command so let's go ahead and give that a shot uh, what we will do is uh, we will split these top two curves uh, round the stones by the outside peripheral curves um, I'm just going to switch off these interior curves here so what we're going to have, I'll we'll split this one too, by both. What we'll have is 
the typical setup for a network surface where you have your outside edge curves so that would be this this that and that so those are our edge curves and then we have our profile curves which would be this and this but we did not split this one so i have to split this one as well so let's go ahead and do that also split that with the peripheral curves so that should be two parts now so let's try that again uh, network uh, surface from curves so choose the inner the inner set of curves and what I've got here it looks pretty good I'm going to um, actually position is good and I'm just going to bring that edge curve down to simplify the surface a bit more I want the surface as simple as possible that's good and say okay and we'll do the same on the other side. So we're going to take our edge curves and we're going to take our interior profile curves and perform the network. What bothers me here is this does not match up. So let's go with tangency or what we could do alternatively is we use the actual edges of the surface instead of the curves that we built and create a D does not look good in position. Everything looks good except for the bulge here, which looks a bit ridiculous. So let's go back to the very basic. Let's have a look here at how that's turned out. And let's start by changing A. To tangency. And that's where the problem starts. I tweaked the curves just a bit. There needs to be a little bit less movement, so it's quite a broad ring. As you can see, it's uh, quite a smooth flow from the stone down to the bottom of the shank on both sides, and uh, it's even closer on the inside. So you leave a lot of material. Um, you actually leave a lot of material in. Uh, this should result in a pretty clean surface from network curves so if i go into our surface from network curves command and start with the inside inside part and we select our edge and profile curves so leave it in position you want the two sides to match up finally and instead of the edge curves you use the surface edge of the other surface that you created already and that creates a nice clean form which is exactly what we want and so we can join these two edges now these two these two sides and we'll give us a color pink okay and next thing we're going to do is we are going to cap this so we are just going to go head on into our uh, boolean edit tools and cap planner holes if it tells you cannot cap planner holes then we do one of two things we first go into our analyze and we check with our edge tools to show edges where all our naked edges are and zoom in on that so sees it at the top but it also sees here on the sides that it's somehow not joined 
um, we'll leave that for the moment. What we will do is, because this is for sure plan on top here. Okay, let's first extrude our top curve. So just let's join those two curves again. Let's join that. Same on the other end. Join that. And we're just going to extrude that with a gumball to create our setting. So just put our stone back on again. Let me see our stone. Let me use the ghosted viewport so we can see the depth of our stone. Could maybe. We'll do the same with the other side. So just grab that curve and extrude that up. There we go. Now what we will have is we will have a closed body surface on the top here. And uh, if I had to hide these two objects, we see there's still a closed, uh, still an open tube at the bottom here. So what we're going to do is we are going to split, uh, explode these two top body surfaces. I'm just going to explode them. And what I'm going to do with these two top surfaces, just hide them for a moment, go into our object and delete that separating surface. Let's unhide our surfaces again. And now what we're going to do is just join all of that up. I'm just going to put all my curves off. I'm just going to select everything and join. And now we have one open poly surface. So I'm going to check again with my analyze tool, show edges, and I want to see all my naked edges. So I zoom in here. And I see it's this surf, it's this side that's giving me trouble. What I can do to close that is I can go to Analyze, Edge Tools, and join two naked edges. And if there's enough uh, tolerance, so if, you're, if you have enough tolerance uh, space to um, force a join, joining these edges requires a joining tolerance of 0 0.00335219. Do you want to join them? I'd say yes. That should take care of solidifying this object so now you'll see it, it looks like it's split so it's, it's it's flipped somehow so you can flip it back let's go into the shaded view this is generally what what happens when the surface is flipped inwards as you can see if i take my analysis tool my surfaces are flipped inwards so i just want to flip them out again Seem to be done. Uh, no, I want to flip, not just analyze. So let's just type flip in the command line. Flip. There we go. Now, if we analyze it, it should. Ha! Ah. Problem. So let's explode this whole object. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut just a chunk away. Or I'm just going to try rejoin it again. See if it. Let's just work with it like that for the moment. And next thing we want to do is we want to bash that ring size hole through. So let's open up our ring size curve. We're going to ghost it. We'll be seeing it over here inside the shank. And let's just extrude that so we have a solid. Go back into shaded. Really doesn't matter what color it is right now. I'm just using it temporarily to bullion the finger out of the ring. So that we have the ring you ready and 
I'm going to start with the cushion cut first. Next thing we want to do is create a cutter for the cushion cut stone. So for the moment I'm just going to switch off my, my shank and I'm going to create a new uh, layer called cutter. Make that white and from the side view I'm going to create a polyline that will look as follows. So I'm just going to put the bow snap off and I'm just going to follow the line of the stone with the girdle and the table and I'm just going to make another little step here that's a bit more open at the bottom and then just go straight down like that. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to revolve using a rail. So we're going to take that curve, we're going to put it into our cutter layer, the switch our stone off and we're going to put the stone, the stone shapes profile curve back and we are going to position that directly on the curve. So I'm just going to use the move tool. Can use an O snap here. And rail revolve. Also we need the center point of this curve. So let's make sure we have center switched on in our own snap on our O snap. And we will go into our surfaces, surface creation tools, and rail revolve is right click with a mouse. And first we choose our profile curve, then our rail curve, then we need our um, middle point for our axis. That should show up. It doesn't show on the center point of this curve. So what we're going to do is create a center point for this curve. So I'm just going to make a surface, plan our surface, you click on that surface, analyze, mass properties and create an, uh, a volume centroid or an area centroid to be even more precise. And I can delete that surface. So now we've got a center point for our curve and let's go back to Rolf, our profile curve, our L curve and now we have the center point of our axis for our cutter and I'm just going to draw the direction straight up. So this should encompass our stone nicely. That's a very quick easy way to make a cutter for your stone. You can cap that object as well. Uh, it's William Tools. Cap planar holes and if we put our object back on again this should be showing through the bottom and indeed it is. And the other thing we want actually what we would want is we would want a hole on the top as well. So um, we also have a bullion on the side so let's go ahead and put this in ghosted view. We are going to use the interpolated curve tool to create another cutter and this time I'm going to switch the snap off. This time the cutter is just going to be something very simple look a little bit like a look, look looks a little bit like a boat. This is not exactly the shape I was hoping that could be a bit more like that. I'm gonna mirror, mirror that over to the other side of the of the stone. And then I'm gonna join these two curves with a a blend curve. Uh, like a curve Just for we'll do a quick curve bend. Okay, so let's join that up, and I'm going to rebuild that curve so it's nice and clean. Rebuild that five or maybe seven points. That's better. Okay, rebuild. Good. 
now if you want and you can just join the top so we can make a solid extrusion from it so you need the o snap again join those two curves and now we're just going to do an extrusion through the top of our stone setting and what we're also going to do is we're going to create a little kink on the inside uh, of our uh, of our of our cutter. With this, we use the cage edit tool. You just take a bounding box, and you can use your world coordinates. And uh, four by four by four is fine. And I'm just going to select those four center pieces and from the top viewport I'm just going to bring them in uh, and even bring them out a little bit and these I'm going to scale out like that so now when we boolean out our cutters it will look as follows this boolean difference First, we're going to boolean out the, the cutter for the stone. If I just cut this out for a second, you see, yeah. And the second cutter, boolean difference. And there we go. Now, I find. Hmm, I find that the the cutter on the inside is maybe a bit and now that we can leave as is. So instead of it going in too much, we're gonna take the top two points and we're just gonna move them out like that. So the setter can well, actually, let's just open that up completely. That's probably going to be better. And let's do that rail revolve again. Excuse me, I have a very blocked nose. That's because, lo and behold, in the middle of July, we still have allergy season. And rail. Rail. No, what we want is rail revolve. So. Go. profile rail curve middle point pull it and there we go now let's do that boolean again so I'm going to choose this cutter this time yeah that's better and we could maybe make that a bit narrower now and do another boolean There we go. Okay, that's looking better. And you've got a nice cut through the bottom. You could even make it that hole a bit bigger if you if you if you wanted to. But that's that's the top, that's the 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 the, the, the one side done. So now we've got the other side. So let's go to other stone and same thing, we're gonna create a cutter uh, just using a profile curve and a rail curve. I'm just going to fast forward through this process so I don't bore you doing the same thing over and over again. So I did the same thing for the marquee stone on the other side of the ring and what you have is, is a lot more a uh, lot more material cut away. This is not how the ring I showed you in the beginning looks exactly the ring that we had in the beginning has a big cut open on the side so there's still some work to be done on this side of the ring but for now what we're going to do is we are going to cut this out and see what we left with how it looks mm. 
and join those surfaces up. And there we go. So now we've got basically both sides finished. Now what we had on the original ring on this, uh, on the beginning of the, the tutorial was a big open side here so that you could see the ring, the, the stone nicely from the side. Uh, like you can see the the round stone nicely from the side as well. Um, you can create whatever kind of side cutters to to create more more light to come through. But let's go with the side cut that I that I had on the other ring. So this will take some time, and we will do that in a second part for this video. But for today, we're going to wrap it up with the ring that we've got finished for the moment. And that actually looks quite good. What we could still do is just uh, put another one of these bullions through the side for, for now. But... I would prefer to do this nice cutout in a second part video. We're going to take a summer break now until mid-August and we'll be back by the end of August with the second part of this video. Hope you enjoyed and learnt a lot from today's model building and may the allergy season be over soon. And uh, good summer to everybody. Cheers.